King Cole, which is represented by LG&E, and KU, which is owned by PPL, Pennsylvania Power and Light Corporation. I think King Cole needs to clean up after themselves. I think that they need to help uh, local communities, uh, such as Letcher County, which 60% of Letcher County has no running water, but they have all that coal. So they're beggars sitting on a throne of gold. And they should definitely get the severance coal pay, but they should also uh, help provide, I think they should help provide some of the water uh, for Letcher County. And uh, so they should help local communities. They should clean up after themselves. And King Coal should invest in alternative energies. King Coal should invest in alternative energies because coal is dirty, it's a finite resource, and it's, it's going down. So these, as a... Uh, uh, a protester of King Cole. These are the things that I want to happen. And it's interesting, too, because you have a lot of uh, folks who blindly endorse King Cole, KULGNE, and Pennsylvania Power and Light. Uh, they, they just blindly endorse them, right? They just say, whatever they do, you know, how dare you protest or say that you want uh, uh, King Cole to actually have some sort of community responsibility to clean up after themselves, to help. Uh, poor neighborhoods and to invest in alternative energies. So it's interesting because they, they blindly say that, but just recently I come across this article here. Um, it's updated August 19th, WDRB.com. They said that a public meeting um, is helping to paint a clear picture of the future of LG&E's cane run facility. The power plant has been cited on several separate occasions by the Air Pollution Control Board. Residents have complained about fly ash and particles falling on their homes and cars. LG&E plans to change the facility so that it burns natural gas by 2016. So this is a positive development. This is a good development by King Cole. King Cole is investing in alternative energy, and this is one of the demands that I have for King Cole. So there's folks that were sitting there saying how they worship King Cole. Will they love him now? I mean, since they're paymasters, since they're... Uh, you know, their corporate dictator, their corporate, you know, their paymasters, their their masses. So if they're uh, King Cole masses saying that they need to invest in alternative energy, will they believe it now? Will they believe it now? They're changing to natural gas. They're burning natural gas now. LG&E is. So natural gas is the biggest competitor to coal. To coal. So natural gas is the biggest competitor to coal, and that's what they're investing in it. Like I said, I think it's a positive development. I think it's a good thing uh, for them to invest in alternative energy, more clean energy, solar, wind, um, and other alternatives. I think you know, anything that would work, really, mag magnetic, uh, magnetic electricity, uh, switchgrass, uh, uh, ethanol, uh, nuclear, you know, anything I think that it's worth looking at. Anything is worth looking at because we do have an energy crisis and we don't need to be dependent on foreign oil for the rest of our life. We're the richest country in the world and we should be able to invest enough money to figure this problem out. I think. So, uh, article goes on, neighbors who are sick of the fly ass said they're happy that the plant will be transformed. Bottom line, if it will help our particular area and our children not to have to breathe that stuff, then we're all for it, but we're concerned about what they continue to do and what they will do as a result of the construction, says resident Kathy Little. Um, also, here's a uh, Fierce Energy, says LG&E uh, and Kentucky Utilities have awarded PLC. Industrial Construction in Black and Veach, a $583 million contract to design and build a new natural gas fuel power plant. The Cane Run facility will incorporate combined cycle technology and utilize Simmons Advanced Technology gas turbines fueled by cleaner burning natural gas. Cane Run will provide up to 660 MV of capacity, the equivalent of powering approximately 660,000 homes. The new plant, Cane Run Unit 7, will replace older fire coal-fired units that would be retired by 2016. King Cole is going to be retiring coal-fired units by 2016. So, um, LG&E, a little bit of background on LG&E. It's a utilities-based company based in Louisville, Kentucky. It's a subsidiary of the PPL Corporation through LG&E and KU Energy subsidiary. LG&E serves over 350,000 electric and over 300,000 natural gas consumers, so almost equal. They almost have equal amount of customers who are 
uh, getting electricity from natural gas and electricity from coal. Kentucky is coal. Why we don't own coal? Why the people or Frankfurt hasn't owned coal so they could provide cheap electricity for Kentuckians? I'll have no idea. I have no clue why that has never happened. Uh, it seems like an obvious solution. Uh, governments are incorporated anyways, and you know uh, the economic benefits of acquiring a utility is obvious. So it covers an area of 700 square miles. It's got a total regulated electric, electric generation capacity of 3,514 megawatts. History. lg &E was formed in 1838 as Louisville Gas and Water, but dropped its plan to provide water utilities in 1842. Changed its name simply to Louisville Gas in 1913. Louisville Gas, Louisville Lighting, and Kentucky Heating merged to form Louisville Gas and Electric. In 1998, LG&E acquired electricity provider Kentucky Utilities. In 1998, LG&E merged with Kentucky Utilities to form LG&E Energy. In 2000, 12 years ago, LG&E Energy was bought by British utility company PowerGen. So KU isn't even owned by anybody in KU. It's not owned by Frankfurt. It's not owned by Kentuckian. In 2000, it was owned by a British utility company. In 2002, PowerGen was bought by the German company, E.ON. Then it was owned by a German. So the British owns KU, uh, LG&E. The Germans own KU and LG&E. LG&E Energy changed its name to E.ON U.S. Finally, in 2010, E.ON U.S. was bought by the PPL Corporation. PPL changed the name of the company to LG&E and KU Energy LLC. So PPL Corporation is what bought it. Pennsylvania Power and Light. Uh, generation of current electric generation stations serving the regions include, include three coal-fired plants, one in Tribble County Generating Station, one in Mill Creek Station, and a cane run station, one natural gas slash fuel oil combustion turbine, one hydroelectric plant, Ohio Falls Station, which is another uh, alternative energy, which I didn't mention. Hydroelectricity, it's free. We're always going. The Ohio River is always going to be flowing. And two natural gas facilities, Maldraw and Magnolia Compressor Stations. PPL and Eon announced on April 28, 2010, a definitive agreement under which PPL will acquire Eon U.S. for 7.625 uh, billion dollars. So for nearly 8 billion dollars is what. Uh, KU was bought out for lg &E and KU. The sales closed by on November 1st, 2010. So, November 1st, 2010. Um, PPL, formerly known as Pencil, uh, Pencil, PPNL or Pennsylvania Power and Light. It's an energy company headquartered in Allentown, Pennsylvania, USA. Currently controls about 19,000 megawatts of electrical generating capacity in the United States, primarily in Pennsylvania and Montana, and delivers electricity to 1.4 million customers in Pennsylvania, nearly a million in Kentucky, and 7.8 million in Great Britain. Which is actually, that's, that's so wild to me. Great Britain is buying their electric from America. When it's, it's cheaper to send electric over the Atlantic Ocean than for them to get it wherever I guess they would get it. It also provides natural gas delivery service to 321,000 customers in Kentucky. So they're delivering natural gas, they're delivering electricity in Kentucky. The majority of PPL's power plants burn coal, oil, or natural gas. PPL, PPL also owns peaking plants, which require a few operators and have a high profit margin due to their ability to rapidly come online. When the price of electricity spikes, PPL's largest plant is the Susquehanna Steam Electric Station, a 200 and 2,352 MW nuclear power plant located on the Susquehanna, Sus Sus Susquehanna River, seven miles northeast of Berwick, Pennsylvania. It's publicly traded in the New York Stock Exchange under the ticket symbol, ticker symbol NYSE PPL. It's the fourth largest employer in the Lehigh Valley region of Pennsylvania. The company's headquarters is based in the PPL building, the tallest building in Allentown. November 1st, 2010, PPL Corporation purchased Eon U.S., the parent company of Kentucky's two major utilities, Louisville Gas and Electric Company, and Kentucky Utilities Company for $7.625 billion, and nearly $8 billion. History PPL is found in... Okay. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a little bit about it. I'm not sure. All oh, the key people, the chairman is James H. Miller of PPL. William H. Spence is the president and CEO. So William H. Spence, S-P-E-N-C-E, -E, and James H. Miller, the chairman. 
So those are the key people in PPL Utility, Pennsylvania Power and Light, uh, which owns Kentucky Utilities and uh, LG&E. Okay, so uh, came across this document here, um, which is talking about the alliance uh, uh, attempt to get Louisville to buy KU and LG&E and have it a public owned uh, utility. In fact, uh, there was somebody that I quoted saying it was the major, the biggest issue for Louisville since the merger. Uh, so public ownership of LG&E, the time to act is now. Unlike to most Louisvillians, no, unknown to most Louisvillians, the city of Louisville once owned Louisville Gas and Electric, but sold it in 1913. The reason, according to environmental activist Sarah, Sarah Cunningham in a letter to Leo to 1809, was that voters and businesses demanded sewer and drainage infrastructure, yet resisted paying for them. Sound familiar? Several years later, in 1944, a proposal was made by then Mayor Wilson Wyatt, who is a progressive, and he's listed at the, on the Freedom Park as one of the key people for civil rights movement. Mayor Wilson Wyatt to add three to four million dollars a year to city revenues for infrastructure needs, like a flood wall, by having the city purchase a utility. This fell through. However, as the owner, Pennsylvania-based Standard Gas and Electric, fought it and won a decision by the Security, uh, Securities and Exchange Commission in 1947 after Wyatt left office. The defeat was fueled by opponents' charges that the plan was socialistic and would take away federal tax monies during wartime. Fast forward now to 2010. Prior to the pending sale of LG&E and Kentucky Utilities by the parent company, Eon, to PPL Corporation, the Abramson administration put forward the highest bid to purchase LG&E. It lost out when Goldman Sachs, the broker of the deal, demanded millions of dollars from the city separate from the actual cost to be available to pay out if the deal fell through. Backing down from this extortion deal, the city then gave up. So fucking Goldman Sachs, the people that helped uh, America's economy crash in 2008, were the ones that were responsible for making sure that Louisville did not buy LG and E&K U. Instead, PPL came in and bought it out from underneath them. So... Uh, as of June 2010, we're faced with the current owner, Eon, requesting a jump in utility rates of 12.1% right before the company is preparing to sell LG&E and &E and KU to Pennsylvania-based PPL Corporation for $7.625 billion. The desire to sweeten the deal for shareholders is transparent. This is less than a year after the Kentucky Public Service Commission granted a $22 million natural gas rate increase. We must not only oppose these rate increases that would be devastating to poor and working families, but express opposition to the sale of uh, to PPL. It is time again for Metro government to renew efforts to purchase LG&E on behalf of our entire community. In a time of deep economic hardships, public ownership and community control of LG&E will allow profits to be redirected from private stockholders to needed infrastructure, lowering utility rates, decreasing the number of shutoffs, and committing more investment into energy alternatives. A coal company, electric company, doesn't give a fuck if you are behind on your bill and you got three fucking hungry mouths in your house. I've seen this. Heard it many times. I've also seen it. They had to get an ex extension cord out of their neighbor's kitchen just to get themselves uh, uh, some air conditioning in their refrigerator, make sure the refrigerator was working um, so the kids could still eat and still, you know, not be burning up on, on the hot days. Um... So, there is, you know, uh, 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 a community vested interest. LG&E and KU should have been bought by uh, Louisville. Why did Goldman Sachs can get in there and extort them, demanding millions of dollars, even though, um, you know, separate from the cost. How they can even fucking do that, I don't even know how. If no other plan works, then Metro Louisville city leaders must investigate the use of eminent domain to take over the utility for the greater good of this community. Eminent domain the, uh, for public welfare. The government's allowed to take over land, property, businesses, anything that they want to. Eminent domain. Eminent domain will be how, uh, how, how. That's how they they would be able to to get it. So that's that's the legal justification. Public ownership of ut utilities like LG and E with citizen-based decision-making boards are simply an extension of democracy beyond the ballot box. Municipally owned and controlled utilities are able to put a priority of providing lower cost, reliable service over maximizing profits for shareholders. They encourage local economic development, keeping a greater portion of their revenues in the community by employing local workers and purchasing from local companies. And they can make long-term community goals that take into consideration the full social cost of coal-based power by investing in more sustainable energy 
uh, sources. So uh, I got one more article about Joe Sanka that was just written in um, Leo Weekly that I want to read. Uh, you should check it out. Uh, this me talking about LGN isn't over. But Occupy, Viva la Revolution, Louisville.